Did you all feel beautiful as black women growing up? Did you all know right away that you were beautiful? Because we didn't start getting black dolls until a little while ago. Right? I was <laughs> ugly as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I'm sure you just thought you were. I have, I I have my you... little ugly moments. I feel like I blossomed after high school. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I blossomed. But I'm not gonna lie, like, I had that parent. My mom did buy me the black Barbie dolls. Okay. She did not yeah. buy white, white dolls. She brought mm -hmm. the white dolls. But how many people, how many of y'all have heard at a young age, oh, you're pretty for a brown girl, you're pretty for a black girl? Oh, I hear that now. certainly have heard that. I, mean, I, I was born on the island of Jamaica. Okay. So, so I grew up around uh, people that, you know, skin tones that look like me. So I never felt inferior until I moved to the United States. Mm -hmm. And not only was my dialect inferior, but also my skin tone. And so there was some of that. But for some reason, I always felt like it was their problem. I still feel like that even now, even throughout high school when my light-skinned friends would be more chosen mm -hmm. than me. And then now that you know I'm older and we're more mature and I end up seeing a lot of these guys at reunions and these, they're like, oh, you know, we actually, you were actually the favorite one, you know, back then, <laughs> you know, and it's sort of like, okay, well, okay, thank you. But the, at the end of the day, you had an opportunity to build my self-esteem or at least be kind to me at that point. Now you want to correct it years later. So you, you do break each other down, like in those early youthful stages and we need to like, but they don't consider know. That. It's ignorance. Back then on television, what was represented as beauty was a light-skinned woman mm -hmm. with long hair. So you become conditioned subconsciously. Yes. So you're looking at beauty from another perspective. You're not looking at, you know, I, I remember being on a playground and telling a little boy, get your black self away from me. Or You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We did that growing up because that was all we saw. We didn't see us on TV. Mm -hmm. We didn't see us on billboards mm -hmm. represented as beauty. And that's another thing Ethnicity Models was created to widen the beauty spectrum. It's just not one standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. It's different shades of beauty. And I sure. think a lot of it is ignorance and that we're not really uh, intentionally saying, oh, I don't want to pick her. But if you everything you've shown is glamorous, looks like her, mm -hmm. then and you're a little boy, you're going to go to her. You don't know any better. So I think we didn't start having these conversations until many years later. Mm -hmm. and, and Recently, right. almost, where it became pop. Remember the light skinned guys were it. I'll be sure was number one pick. You, so it was right. not until recent, maybe 20 years ago, when it started changing. So none of it's intentional. It's just all subconscious programming from what. But I hate what it does to us. Like even when yes. you said, like they look at her, I felt a. Uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. no, no I didn't mean no, to do no, it, no, no, but no, I'm no. just saying. We need to have this conversation yeah. mm -hmm. because it's like. Like, there's a guilt sometimes, right? When you know that you may get chosen because of like a skin tone over your, if you care about your sisters, like I do. Like, I don't feel great about someone saying, oh, I, I, I don't like anything darker than you. I, I check mm -hmm. guys that say stuff like that, that bullshit. Or they think because, you know, it may benefit you when they say these things that you're gonna go along with the bullshit. I don't. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our job to say, when we hear those statements, to say, oh, hold up. I may be slightly lighter. I'm still dark skin in my heart. I always tell people that all the time, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that it's our responsibility to track that right away because that just keeps that stupid stereotype going along. Yeah. I hate when I hear but you're, like that. You're, I don't you're think rare, it's a, I don't you're, think you're it's a rare exception, exception though. Really, you, Honestly, because I've been, you know, I've, I've traveled, you know, around the world and I've been in places where um, I used to work for a sports company uh, back in the day and I've, and I've, and I've been in rooms where they're beautiful, wealthy people. And I've heard, you know, the light skin, oh, it feels so good to be light skinned, you know, because they're getting all of the I mean, attention. And I'm standing there hearing these conversations. And so there is a level of, um, intercultural, you know, racism that, that happens or, you know, certain level of uh, prestige being lighter skin versus dark skin that we project off of on, the, on each other. But you're rare and I think that what you're doing and, and how you, your perspective is certainly refreshing for anyone who may be challenged in that area because mm -hmm. it's definitely, we're not on each other's teams in those moments mm -hmm. as much as we, we, we perhaps should be by checking other people for that intercultural discrimination. Well, we, we have to. Mm -hmm. If we're truly going to talk about being sisters, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's not like not, you know, just you can't just ignore it when it benefits you mm -hmm. to say. And I've been accused of, of, of being colorist before by oh. making, because in my mind, I don't see myself as a light skinned girl. I think I always tell my friends, I'm caramel, I'm brown. And they're like, yeah. No, yeah. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> so when I speak sometimes, I don't think like how other folks view me because I've never had that issue. I've never had that issue. I never saw myself like that. So I've always like kind of been down, mm. you know? I don't like that. Right, I get it. But I, some of it's preference too, because me personally, I prefer a chocolate man. 
And it's not that I don't think a light-skinned man is attractive. It's just something about their rich chocolate mm -hmm. ethnic <laughs> essence that just d d attracts me first. If two guys come up and one is light-skinned and one is chocolate, and a light-skinned try to talk to me, I'm like, I want to talk to your friend. Like, <laughs> it, it's just some of its preference. And it's not about being prejudiced. Yellow I just find that more... So can we just settle that? That doesn't mean that someone's a colorist, that they have a preference for a lighter or darker, right? But if right. they're discriminating against that and saying, I can't stand, I don't like, yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. see. Now that's different. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? I think that it's fine to have preferences, but preferences can be racist, prejudicial, and discriminatory. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to be very specific in mm -hmm. the language that we use and be honest with ourselves about what those statements are, are saying about ourselves and about each other. There, within our community, there's so much internalization of Eurocentric beauty ideals, and we we project those ideas onto each other. So, um, I, you know, I'm hesitant to contribute because I, I I don't want to say anything offensive. Um, on this show, contribute, <laughs> contribute. So, I mean, we having a real conversation. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, I mean, talk. We can go. We can I go. have felt the same way as you do mm -hmm. <laughs> about the chocolate. Yeah, but okay. you know, I've dated all over the spectrum. I'm from Toronto. It's one of the most diverse cities on the planet. Have so. you have you dated white white man? I'm with a white man right now. Okay, okay. I've got a snow king. Oh. A snow king. <laughs> okay, I've never heard that before. <laughs> I do. That's what they call those me. Eurocentric ideals, though. Then translate into my work that I do, right? Mm -hmm. So then you women come and she's like, you know, what what look do you want? You know, and they oftentimes, if, she, if she's chocolate like me, she'll want to look like Kim Kardashian, like everyone else. It, complete different spectrum because she believes that that is what the standard of beauty is. It's Kim Kardashian or J-Lo, even though she looks like me with, you know, brown skinned. Um, so it's hard to achieve that. So when, you, when you're when you're So lighting, brown skinned girls are acting, uh, asking to look like Kim Kardashian. Nine times out of ten, they bring me photos of the complete opposite of the spectrum. And I'm saying, why not Kelly Rowe? Like, Browns, you know what I mean? I'm naming, you know. Meanwhile, Kim Kardashian is bringing in a black girl's picture right, saying, I exactly. want to look like this. But it, but it does <laughs> translate into, you know, how we show up in our, in, our, in, our, in our beauty and in our hair and sometimes in our fashion and also in our choices to enhance certain parts or, you know, of our body just so we can really have uh, to, to, to be represented somehow, you know, and to be seen. Because we all want to be seen, right? But I think that it's just a matter of why can't you look your best with who, why can't you love yourself for who you are? And let me enhance upon that. Mm -hmm.